Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, uh, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lad. <laughs> Coming in for this week's Queen Sugar, Season 4, Episode 11. We're going to go ahead and apologize. I know y'all kind of gotten used to us going on premiere every week. But we're off work. Yeah. And we're about to head to get in some water and have a little bay day. Yeah. So we're not going to be available to do any of that kind of jazz. So we apologize in advance. But for all of you all that have been interested in our birthday vlogs, we promised you we'll let you know when they were up. They are up on our main channel. We'll make sure we link those below. Yeah. So you'll be able to see what Stanley did on his birthday. Then you'll be able to see what I did on my birthday. Yeah. And you may see some folk. If you're a person that watches YouTube, you may see some folk that you may even know Already now. here on YouTube. So we had a really yeah. good time. So let's go ahead and get into... Hold on, I'm being rude. If you are an old family member, y'all know. Welcome yeah. back. If you are new to the channel, then consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free 99. The price will go up at some point. We just haven't really, <laughs> we haven't agreed on when that price is going to go up. Yeah. Go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. At this point, it doesn't even matter. You've already been counted. Yeah. All right. Um, season 4, episode 11, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, for me, this episode was one of those episodes where it seemed like a storm came through. Mm. And it made everyone sit down and address some stuff. There was nowhere to run to. And that's the one thing that I can't appreciate about being in Virginia is that we have extreme summers and sometimes we have extreme winters. Yeah. And sometimes those extremes put you in situations where you just have to stop. Mm -hmm. You have no other choice but to sit and deal. And whoever you, you stuck with, you That's just who go, you stuck with. Hello. So don't get stuck <laughs> in the wrong situation you on. Because then now much later you be having some hot stuff going on. Yeah. So what had happened was we're going to deal with Dollar and Raw first. Because they seem like to be <laughs> at the top of the hour. <laughs> so, it seems like it's been a couple of weeks since the relapse and whatnot. So, Ralph Angel has kind of been on this avoiding Disha thing. Yeah. And according to Disha, the only reason I'm seeing you right now is because our children have a play date. So, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So, so Ralph, it's been like that, what, bro. It's really been good here. Yeah. Well, long story short... He ended up telling Disha, he was like, you know what? It's complicated. She she relapsed. And I've been there for. Her. And I realized throughout all of this, I've never stopped loving her. Which we all knew that. Yeah, they didn't, I mean, they yeah. never stopped loving each other. But just because you he love someone just pissed off. doesn't mean that you're supposed to be with them. Yeah, he Hold just was pissed off about the blue situation. Yeah, yeah but they all. never stopped loving nah, each other. I think nah. a blind man could see that. Exactly. So, he said, you know, I've been hurt when she's hurt. When she's good, I'm good. And mm -hmm. at this moment, basically, I'm not good. I love that woman. And Disha said, you know what? That was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful, but it's not me. I'm not playing second fiddle. And I say, come on. She said, we will work something out with these children because mm -hmm. they do love each other and you know they bestie friends right now and they having a good time together yeah. but as far as that I'm not going to play you know second string to your heart I'm not going to do that yeah I was expecting for her to go clean all. you can tell that it hurt her cause yeah that's it the hurt one her when she walked away yeah that's the one thing that I always say if you're not sure that you are ready to move on don't, don't get, get mess hurt. with no one else's heart yes because people will get attached to you really really fast mm -hmm. just for you to realize that you're not done with your past yep. and then that leaves another person to be broken and then when they go to the next person yep. they are apprehensive about the whole thing so yeah and the balance that meshes out and also if you a person to get in a relationship with somebody and you realize that they got a whole lot of stuff going on from a past relationship you got to ask yourself do I am I ready to deal with that because you got, I mean, it's pretty much a handwriting to be on the wall is that they, it's very possible they might go back to their ex. Yeah. Especially if they're still dealing with them. So you got to ask yourself, do I want to put myself in that? Yeah, especially when children yeah. involved too. Yeah. So we see Ralph Angel, he goes back over to the dollars and it seems like he's been taking care of Dollar. <clears throat> 
and you know making sure that she eats and all of this and we have learned that she is back in contact with her sponsor so that yes. does my heart some good yeah praise the lord that she yes. is in contact with her sponsor and she seems to be taking this getting back on the sobriety train mm -hmm. very very seriously and we wish her the best but it does seem like at this moment her and raw are going to be tr taking a stab at trying to be back together mm -hmm. <laughs> you said that so nice, but uh, yeah, How I really feel. Now, now the thing about it, we don't have anything. I against, really don't have a problem against people with in relationships. You, you can be with whoever the fuck you want to be with. I have a problem with the narrative. Exactly. <laughs> I have a problem with the narrative, and I'll tell you this. And this is something that y'all can't fight me on. <laughs> Whenever someone has an addiction, no matter what kind of addiction it is, they control the narrative of those around them that love them. That's right. And they can pull them in and push them out at will. Mm -hmm. And I see that just happening yeah. with this situation right here. Rob was at a point where, yes, they he never was, stopped loving each other. But he was done. But he was done with the relationship mm -hmm. and as soon as she relapses <clears throat> and she starts pulling on his heartstrings because he does love her she's controlled the narrative of pulling him back in to try to take a stab at it mm -hmm. but if she ever gets to a point where she doesn't want to be in this relationship or she wants to do something other than wrong she has enough power to, to, to push, push him right on back out mm -hmm. just as quickly and she, she pulled, pulled him in. in. And mm -hmm. that's the problem I have with the narrative of people dealing with people with addictions. Because that is a strong manipulative spirit. And that spirit controls everybody around them. You can't, dis you can't dispute me on that. Mm -hmm. Look at anybody you know that has addiction. Everybody got them in their family. Everybody. And look at the people around them that it controls. <clears throat> yep. Some people can't go out of town because they mm -hmm. gotta make sure that that Bobo eat, that mm -hmm. he got something to, that he got this, yep. so he can get the word, yep. or he can do this. Yeah. You become their parent all you over again. Yeah, you become you their CNI dog. Yeah. So that's the only narrative. <clears throat> I don't care if they're together. Now I really don't give a rat's say because when I sleep, I sleep with you. So yeah. well, I care. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really did like <clears throat> what I saw. That could be of him and Deisha. Someone that could. And I'm not for the super save a whole kind of relationship either. Don't nah. get it twisted. But I feel like the path that Ralph Angel is on. She could be a great asset to keeping him on the path. Of making sure that all his I's are dotted. And all his T's mm -hmm. are crossed. To make sure that he's not crossed over. Just like he was over there at that farm. And now that his program is shut down. Yeah. You know, I felt like they can compliment each other really good. But him and Dollar can compliment each other really good. Yeah, they too. were. I mean, if they we were, can get yeah. past this addiction and actually yeah. work and move forward with life. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we'll see, man. But we'll see. But anywho, so Micah and, and Kiki, they yeah. were ready for prom. And Kiki looked beautiful. That color was everything on her skin. So they're over at the house. You know how how we do. We make it up. We make it up before prom event. You know mm -hmm. the family comes over. They take pictures, pictures and videos. Yeah. And, um, but we know what the deal was with Kiki and Micah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And guess who's over at the house too? Nova. I said, oh, oh she so done got right on back in, buddy. Too quick for me. I All said right. that wilderness retreat really did something yep. for them, right? But guess who ain't feeling no over there at that house. If I still ain't for no booze. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So the kids will get ready to go to the prom and the storm is on its way. Charlie tried to give Micah an umbrella was like, you gonna need this. And he was like, you know how kids do. Mm -hmm. they I'm, don't, I'm too cool for an umbrella, man. Yeah, you don't mess up the swag. <laughs> you know, I look good. I smell good. My girl look good. With this umbrella? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gonna mess up this whole freaking tuxedo I got on, man. Yeah. So before they was able to get out the door, Hollywood had grabbed up Micah real quick and he was like, yeah, like young yeah. blood, uh, I've been young before. I know what this mm -hmm. night room was, is supposed to do. Yeah. You just make sure that you are safe. Yeah. I said, come on now. He had the conversation with Micah in five seconds that Ralph Angel didn't yeah, have in five well, minutes. Yeah, and the thing about it is we have to f stop fighting against the kids in school. 
yeah, you don't want them to have sex outside of marriage. You, you don't want them to have babies out of wedlock. Versus fighting against them, doing it, training them how to do it right. That's right. all we saying. Just train them how to do it right so that they won't get pregnant prematurely and have to grow up and struggle, you know, to make ends meet. Being because a the baby's is here, you know, you young, you have a baby, you got no job, you still in school, so that messes up your chance of college or anything you want to do is, is going to not stop it, but at least going to, you know, make it move a lot slow. Yeah, they train, so it's training them. Now. So you train them how to use condoms and stuff like that, man. Yeah. And, and the world will be a better place. <laughs> so the kids ended up going to an ho a hotel before the prom, right? I said, Lord, I remember those days. You, uh -huh. We rented out the whole freaking hotel. Yeah, y'all was, was, was big pimping at y'all from. Yeah, like. yeah, we turned it, we turned it out. Don't even ask. But anywho, um, so they sitting there, you know. Of course, Micah and his crew are there, and then there's Kiki and da 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 da. So long story short, they became a a topic of conversation about this extra room that was rented for Ma what was the name? Mikhail. Mikhail, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, Kiki's face kind of just, her whole demeanor just changed. I was like, and ain't I, that what you wanted? And I, I'm not sure. I didn't catch it. I didn't rewind it. But I was like, what happened here? And he was trying to explain it away while I wasn't really sure. And you then know. I wanted to cancel it. And then I, and I, I, I still didn't get it. Y'all put it down in the comments what really happened with that. Because I was like, like my husband. And that would yeah, wasn't yeah, that the plan? Yeah, you, you told him, yeah, we ought to do this at prom. So he he set it up. Of course, he set it <laughs> he up. Set he it was up. ready. Yeah, he set it up. So the storm came, and they they got rained in. They weren't able to leave and go to the prom. Prom is canceled. So now the all of those people in the room, they're sitting around and they're talking about their plans for ten years down the road. So everybody had these really good thought out plans for their future, and I was like. Yeah, right. that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Right here. And at the house, we had realized that Kiki is going to one college and Micah is going to another. And mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that played into what happened at the hotel too. I don't know. Um, Kiki had her thing of what she's gonna do. Then when they got to Micah, Micah really wasn't sure about where say? he was gonna be in ten years. He said, you know, I would love to, you know, take my photography more seriously. Da -da, but I feel like. I need to do something that's a little bit more noble and done yeah. And I said, okay, so he's like at that crossroads like that. of doing what is, I call it black acceptable, <clears throat> or doing what he loves. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to put let my parents down because I have this 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 big train behind me pushing me into greatness. Yeah. Am I going to let them drive me into a path that I don't like exactly. for the sake of being successful yeah. or do what I love to do? Yeah. So, and and like Frost was said, you know, it's okay to not be okay. I'm going to put it's okay not to know what you don't want to do. And that's the yeah. truth. You got to admit, sometimes you just don't know what it is that you want to do. Hell, you can be, 41 yeah, you, you can be passionate about something one day and then a few weeks later be like, I don't like this no more. That's life. So, you have to do stuff to discover your passion. You don't just be like, it's not always just going to come to you all the time. Sometimes you have to try stuff. Yep. So I think that's what Mike is going to be at is not feel bad because all your friends know what they want to do because matter of fact, by the time they get to college, they may be like, I don't want to do that uh -huh. no more. It I just sound good right now because you're young. So I won't be a praise down. So that's why I, you know, at school we used to have them little things that you did on the computer to let you know what you're supposed to, your career supposed to be. They said I'm supposed to be a mortician. I ain't want to bury no dead, but I don't even like going to funerals. So I know that was Bo's kid. Oh my god! I ain't never even considered trying to become no goddamn mortician. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make a whole lot of money. That's the guarantee. Yeah, they money. do. And you don't have to talk to anybody. So if you're an introvert, it's the perfect um. No, what well, you do kind of. And, and especially when I heard that sometimes they don't take their last breath until they get to the morgue. Yeah. I'm dead. Soon they get right up. <gasps> boom. I'm gone. Yeah, remember that happened to Alyssa? Yep. Uh, one of my good friends. She, she used to it, though. She used to it, but she said that day, it was late in the midnight hours. Man. And she said that person took that last breath, and she said, I was rolling wrapping that hair. She said, girl, I left up out of there. Man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been probably burnt the place down. Mm -hmm. So, um, next thing we see, because they're not able to leave this hotel, Michael decided he wanted to, you know, create a little romance, and he... 
had a little playlist on his phone, so he asked Kiki to have this dance with him. I said, your iPhone show put out some good sound, yeah, though. Yeah, man. I said, got some loud sound and everything. Nice detail. I said, okay, Queen Sugar, I see you. You you let us hear what you want us to hear. But uh -huh. all the stuff we need to hear, we have to turn the volume up and go to the TV like this. Uh-huh. All right. They're always up on 40. So they had them a good little moment and whatnot. And come to find out, Kiki, I like you, girl. Mm-hmm. Kiki was like, you know what, Mike, I really don't know if I'm ready. Do we ever know if we're ready? But I've gone ahead and prepared myself, and I started taking birth control pills months ago. Oh, I wow. said, oh, oh, wait a Sorry, minute, wait a now. minute. Uh -huh. But Come usually girls, usually girls are really more responsible when it comes to stuff like that. Because at some the end of, of the day, some of y'all, if it goes wrong, it's on us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we got yeah. the carry, we got the birth, we got a race. Mm hmm. Is what it is. So, yeah, she's been responsible. I still want to know where her daddy is. Like, where was the daddy at? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I well, she know. did say the dad already did that skit over at the dad house and whatnot. Um, and I like Michael's hair pulled back, but I love Michael's hair, period. Like, a lot of people have problems with Michael's hair. I love <laughs> Michael's hair. I think this whole look is him. I think it's a whole It's starting vibe. to grow on me now. I it love it on, on me. Yeah. At first, I was like, okay. Oh, it was a shocker at first yeah. because Michael has a distinct look and he's always like this. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then you put all of that over here and be like, where should my eyes focus right now? But now it all comes together. I like it. Yeah, and it was powerful too that, that um, they stuck that in there too. It's like, just because you're young, don't mean you have to have sex. And I like the fact that they both see the value in, in well, Kiki giving up her virginity. Michael, right. yeah, Michael not virgin no more. But for him to, to support that, yes. because a lot of young guys are trying to push. On. Come on, you know, it's prom night. You know what you told me a few weeks ago? Yeah, I'm ready. Like, come on, let's let's do that thing. Getting the attitude. Yeah. So for him to be like, okay, I I, I want to hit it, but I'll wait. Yeah, because I love you enough and I respect you mm -hmm. enough to do it when you know it's time. Yeah. I said, okay, Micah, I like you. Yeah. You was raised right in the two-parent house. Let me stop. <laughs> so you better than your daddy. So you your daddy, your daddy, yeah, so your daddy <laughs> throwing ding lane all around town and you just trying to hold out for one woman. For now. So I hope it stay that way. Sometimes the best examples in life is to do the opposite of what you've seen done before. Well, say what the Bible say, a child shall lead them. Hello. Hey, oh, I'm Away. Yeah. <laughs> so Unvi um, and Hollywood. Unvi um, and Hollywood left from over there at the um the pre prom, and they ended up going home. And the storm is a coming. Yeah. And they're back on their good ish, and mm -hmm. I am so here for it because I was so sick and tired of angry Vi. Yeah. But what I don't like, cause y'all know I have to get like James said, get on my soapbox, but I'm going. Um. We act like Tom heals everything. Unvi, yeah, she might have dealt with some things within herself and did some self-reflecting and done. But we really, truly haven't seen Vi deal nah, with uh -huh. anything that that came up with this whole Nova thing that brought all of this turmoil into her life, mm -hmm. that bucked up her relationship temporarily or permanently. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But now it seems like just because time, everything is getting back together. Mm -hmm. But... That skit's gonna come back up. Yeah. And it's gonna come back up with a vengeance. Yeah, because you had there, ain't with, gone. He ain't gone. Yeah, yeah, he's just hiding out right now. And he she still back. ain't dealt with Nova yet. No. The person that she says brought all this back into her life, which Nova was the vehicle to bring it back up. She but was it was callous. already there. It was there. It was there. It was buried deep. It's exactly. like this situation right here. Time done went by. You know, went down underneath the surface a little bit. Just yep. like weeds. When you out there in your yard and you, you pluck them weeds up, they gone for a little bit. But they coming back. But the right conditions, they them motherfuckers back. be back again. Yep. So that's what I did like. But Vi, <clears> she's <throat> on her grown and sexy with Hollywood. She don't told Alexa to play Vi's. What she said? Vi's groove. Romantic or, playlist or something. I said, okay. And she doing a little strip tease for her man. And he was like, hold on, wait. Say, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I've she, been waiting on this woman to come back right here. She done <laughs> gave him a cleansing bath and a little massage and massage. I said, Bro, oh. if said, you ain't man. got your woman to, to, to wash your back like she was doing, man. Change your whole entire life. Matter of fact, ask her to do it for you tonight, man. Yeah. Did you really just do that on camera? Yeah, man. 
So I'm kind of obligated to do it now? Cause no, I, no, I told them to ask. They no, 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 no. That was manipulative. That was that crackhead manipulation. <laughs> Very much so. But so most of the time, you come in and do it anyway. I do. Yeah, I so. like to do it. Yeah. Like, fresh version, I do it for you. Kid. Yes. Stanley loves to wash my back, and he loves, loves to, rub to rub my feet. feet. Yeah, but He is a feet guy, and I am here for it because I love my feet. Yeah. <laughs> so... So they seem like they're on their good skit and they're having a conversation because Hollywood seems to still be on his I need a support system for black brothers. Mm. So he wants to open up this like this kind of loungy type of atmosphere where they can get together, be real, have conversations that they are not privy to have in everyday life and everyday settings. Yeah. And Vi was like, you know what, I support that. I can get behind it. So now they're trying to get a name, and he did come up with a name of the place. And I said, that's going to be a really good look mm -hmm. for Hollywood. And I, and I like that he's taking this thing, and he's running with it. He's realizing the value of dealing yeah. with your stuff. And I'm like, so Vi, which, which we all was at. But, but, anyway. but you think about it, though. It's not a lot of places. You know when you, you know, I just say from 16 on up to close to 30, you know, you ready to like turn up at the club, uh -huh. but it's not a lot of transition from that 30 on where you can go to some grown and sexy. Yeah. Now, we got like one spot here in Richmond, yes. and that joke will be packed wall to wall. And it's like everybody, super, yeah, that's 38, <laughs> yeah, own up, want to yeah, be in there their because place. it's non problematic. So, I'm like, I would love to see more of that kind of stuff. Why don't you do it, Hollywood? I thought about it, man, I definitely thought about it. I like stuff like that. And maybe we can just start off with just, you know, like kind of like we're doing with the meetup. Whole lot of us get together, meet up somewhere, and then it can transition over into a, a, a physical establishment. You could do that. Yeah. I like stuff like that. Have a little yacht night, do something like oh, that. Oh, man. Man, what you talking about? Grown, sexy, yep. non problematic. You you don't have to worry. You, you Look, don't have no gunshots. That's what nobody say, getting killed. There's a 90% chance that you're not going to get shot. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, back then, about 99% of the time when I went out, you heard at least one gunshot. Yeah, yeah. And at least one fight was going to break out. Guaranteed. Yep. Guaranteed. And now you too old, you ain't got time for that business. Nah. You just want to go first, out and have a good time. First of all. Make it back to work on Monday. First of all, you can't run like you used to. Hell no, I'm just going to lay down on the ground. Yeah, the gunshot, <laughs> gunshot go off. You better fall down because your knees messed up. <laughs> got no feet ain't right. So you ain't got time for all that. Oh, I'm running behind the gunman because if he running that way, he can't shoot me. <laughs> I'm going to be right behind him. But what you heard, y'all running from him, I'm running behind him. And then when he get this way, I'm going to turn off like that. I'm not going to get out. All right. Let's talk about Charlie and Nova and Jacob. Uh. Okay. So we have Charlie and Nova back on their good skit. But I always remember what the father said about Charlie. Charlie is a brilliant child. She's a great child with a good heart, but she's thoughtful. Very thoughtful. And what that pretty much means that everything that Charlie does, there's some wheels turning behind it. Yeah, she and I And I do believe this. Hmm. Her mending a relationship with her sister is genuine, but it's beneficial. Oh, yeah. Very beneficial for her. Oh, because yeah. Because she knows that Nova can get down in the, in the crevices and find out some stuff that's mm -hmm. going to help her with this campaign. Exactly. So I'm just going to throw that out there. And even though she made Nova feel like it was her idea when oh, it was yeah. in the truck. Yeah. Hello. When she started talking about all the different problems and challenges, and Nova's like, you know I can help you with, with that, that, right? right? Hmm. Uh-huh. Because Charlie is thoughtful. So beware of people coming around you telling you all their problems. They are undercover asking you for help. Because <laughs> they know you have the solution to their problem. Hashtag undercover help. Huh. Hashtag thoughtful. Yeah. The daddy put that out there before he died. Shout out to Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> so, because of this whole campaign thing, Unvi, before she left from over at the, um, pre the pre prom, she told um, Carly, listen, the diner is ready. It's set up. I was like, what the hell's going on in the diner? Well, long story short, she's got the diner set up so that Charlie can come through and she can do some dry runs of how she's going to do her presentation to the yeah. audience and to the public. And so that she can kind of tighten up some spots and whatever. So then we see Nova. She's sitting out there and Nova is pretty much that person that's in the, in the audience that's going to... Um, 
She's yeah. going to hit you everywhere you go. Uh. Yep. So you're going to have to recover fast. She's going to do that. Mm -hmm. So she was doing that for Charlie. Charlie was like, hold on, wait a minute. What? Is this you talking again? Telling me your real feelings? Like, or you just nah, really trying I'm to prepare that, me? Yeah, I'm trying to be that person that's going to be in the audience. So Nova said, listen. When you're dealing with these landers, you got to come with something deep. And you got to throw them off. Mm -hmm. So she presented her with this book. And she said, that right there is going to throw all of them off. Mm -hmm. So they keep on, keep on, keep on. And Nova gets a telephone call. Well, Mr. Calvin said, yeah. he's coming through for your birthday. Yeah, hey, I'm in New Orleans. I said, oh, so he just calls like right now, right now? Uh -huh. Like you didn't set up that with me? Okay, whatever. But she... Calvin is black. He is. I'm trying to tell you. Let me stop. <laughs> but, so, Charlie told Nova, say, you know, I ain't seen you smile like that forever. I said, I see all the Nova's uh -huh, teeth. Yep. I mean, they was all the way up here like this. <laughs> she said, go ahead and go. Have you a good, good night. Light some incense. Clean sheets. Do something. Uh -huh. And she was like, Nova said, yeah. Because Charles, I mean, um, Calvin, he can handle he can it. Handle it. <laughs> I don't yeah. that. But we know. We know. Uh -huh. So they get over to the house and, you know, Calvin comes through and he has set up some dinner reservations. He wants to take her out for the birthday. He got some gifts and all that good stuff. Well, the storm yep. shut them in as well. And now they're sitting there dealing with each other. And I said, I thought y'all was going to take this slow. Mm -hmm. But they ended up, he ended up cooking for her and they had a really good talk. And he's realizing that because he's now divorced and he has parental obligations every other weekend, him and Nova's schedule is not going to really link up the way that they think is going to, that it's supposed to link up for them to be able to go further into this relationship. So he says, you know what, Bacallus? <laughs> I'm moving back. I'm moving back, man. I said, like, oh, just like I that. Said, I said, I said, oh, you mean? Just like that. You ain't moved back for your kid, but you moved back for this one. All uh -huh. right. But anyway. That's what that puss do to you, man. I bet it do. Mm -hmm. So... They go try to take a stab at it. Stella kept saying, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. I think they should still wait because she still got all that stuff going on with that book. So, and then <laughs> she ain't got back right all the way in with everybody in the family. She still got to deal with Rob. She still got to deal with uh, okay. Aunt Di. Um, Prosper ain't said too much, so maybe she didn't say nothing really bad about him in the book. If she said something bad about Prosper. But, yeah, so we don't even know what that end game, but Calvin, I think he just so intrigued to be back with her again. Yes, yeah. and he said, he, what y'all not going to do, your family ain't going to keep looking at me like I'm the white the, cop that's, that's, that's married, married and, and sleeping, you sleep, around. <laughs> sleeping around with you. I said, okay, child, oh, oh, Calvin, this ain't got nothing to do with you for real, for real, but I see what you're saying. I just say, you go ahead and you move back and you just go to your own apartment or house yeah. and let her stay in her dome. I didn't don't think he was move. moving in with her. He had his uh, look in his eyes. I want to move in with you. I mean, I guess if he had his way, he would. But I don't yeah. think that that was the angle he was coming in at. But you know, you know, Calvin is black, so black people know Excuse how to stop move. Stop calling Calvin. Black. He black people know how to move in on you without you knowing they move and in on you. And we know that. Yeah, you know, piece of clothes here, piece of furniture there. No, did, did we tell y'all that Stella's best friend when we first got married? Like. We were probably my like cousin. I'm a best friend. My cousin. He's your cousin slash best friend. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like him anymore. But anyway, um, <laughs> he moved in on us, and we didn't even know it. And we didn't know it. Like, how does the hell does that mm -hmm. happen? We think that we helping you out because your car having problems, mm -hmm. and you work near the house, and we letting you stay a few times during the week, and every time you come. I looked in the closet and he had more clothes in his closet. I'm full of clothes. Then I then we had yeah. it ours combined. <laughs> I said, when the hell did he move in? And then the next day we But got, you know, I got the answer. The apartment he had. He let he, it go. He let it go. He stopped paying for that when he was coming. Yeah. I said, oh my papa, you got to Because it made sense in the beginning for him to come up here because he worked up here. And go to work. Crackhead manipulation. But it became. But that, he won't crack it. Yeah, he, yeah, he was eventually living. Yeah, living with us. Yeah. And then we had to put that mother. That's what Cal That's what Calvin is gonna do. So he's gonna be like, you know what? Well, let me come on. I'm just gonna stay over there with you on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and I'm going. I know home you don't Sunday. like thunderstorms. <laughs> yeah. And then the next week, you know what? I'm gonna come up over there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then gonna work it all the way to the weekend. You know, he there. Two brush and everything. Yup. So I was like, okay. So Charlie is over there at the um at advice trying to do things all on her own. Mm -hmm. 
by herself and Jacob walks in. Yeah. And Jacob came through and railroaded her like a mug. <laughs> there was something so intriguing about Jacob. And I, I don't know if y'all agree with me. I like Jacob for the simple fact that Jacob is so aware of the privilege that he has. Mm -hmm. And he knows that it's unfair to others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if he likes you, he tries to give you an opportunity to be a fair competitor and to compete on a level playing field. But he's not going to do what it takes to not live in his privilege. Yeah, it he, is something he, so intriguing about. He's not gonna go against his family. He's not gonna go against his family, although he know they full of bull. And uh, him and Charlie gets into it because he likes Charlie, and Charlie has a thing for him too. Let's mm -hmm. not get it twisted. Yep. And long story short, he told her, "You just need to go ahead and just drop out. I'm yeah. gonna win. I'm gonna win. It's done. It yeah, is my, what it my is. My family gets what they want. Yeah, I told you a long time ago that there is power behind my family." And there's nothing that you can do about it. The only thing that I can do is when I get in office is to work with you. Yeah. Let's let's do it that way. She was like, wait a freaking no, no. But we then ain't like, doing that. like we said last night laying in the bed, watch this. Jacob also has a way of pushing Charlie to come out with all claws showing because yep. he knows that you if you tell her she can't, can't. she oh, will she coming, yeah. And he always tells her what she can't do, mm -hmm. and she comes out with some skit. And it always makes Jacob look like the bad guy. But sometimes I think that she's playing into what he really wants. Because Jacob don't want this. Yeah. He even said it. He said he really want to be um, on the um, board. So she gives yeah. him a scapegoat to be the loser fairly. If that makes any freaking sense. Yeah. So long story short, that book revealed that Jacob's great-great-great-grandmama is black. black. And that there's a whole lot of... Um, tears into the Landry Enterprises that automatically makes it unfair for black people and the mm -hmm. rates and all of this good stuff. So now they're going to use this as an opportunity for, to him get, to lose. for him to lose because he's going to gain, what is it? He's going to lose a whole lot of his racist voters mm -hmm. and the, the black people that sees that he's trying to use the angle of now getting into the black demographic are going to also turn away and go over there to Charlie because yeah. they was like, what you're not going to do is bamboozle me yeah, and you trick me and to vote black for you. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're not going to do is do this and broaden your horizon. Yeah. They're trying to narrow the road. So he got on the press conference and he basically put it all out there that his grandmama is black. I hope he's genuine though. That's all. I just hope it's still all he, genuine. He's he's a very intriguing yeah. character. <clears throat> Him and Charlie Boy, they they are some readable but unreadable people. Mm -hmm. So that's all we got. It was a good episode. Very yeah. calm. Real calm. Yep. But you know, gave us some good nuggets. So what do y'all feel about this um, this rekindling of Dollar and Ra? Put it down in the comments straight from the VA. Dirty, dirty sound. Two up, two down. Holla.